Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome to another video. So uh, I did a little project here and it was a little bit of hindsight being 2020. I should have probably videoed more of it. Uh, but you see that door back there. I built a walk-in gun vault. Uh, I outgrew my safe, my firearm safe. And so to keep my items secured and to keep them in a safe position in a safe place, I decided to do that project, and so let's go over real quickly how I did it. And welcome back. So yes, I'd like to apologize right off the bat and say I'm sorry I didn't take more video of this, but I did take quite a few pictures and I will walk you through the process and what I did. Now, incidentally, if you're liking what I'm doing here on the Jack of All Trades channel, I'd really appreciate you smashing that like and subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Hit me with those comments and the thumbs ups. Helps with the YouTube algorithms and that's the support I ask you for. So with that being said, let's go ahead and let's walk through what I did here. All right, in this space, I had a uh, refrigerator and I also had my gun safe. And so I removed those two items quite obviously and it gave me a, an area of about three feet by five feet roughly. And I just used standard framing construction, 16 inch on center with two by fours. No big mystery here, uh, just basically building two walls. And I mounted those walls uh, to the existing walls that I had in my shop. Uh, like I said, I used standard framing construction, no big mystery. I screwed everything into place rather than using nails because I had to basically stick build it uh, piece by piece. Now you can see I've got uh, some wire running through the wall there. There was a motion activated light switch uh, in that location. So obviously putting the wall there, I had to relocate that and uh, subsequently allow the motion activated light to function properly. And here's just a, another view of the uh, of the five foot section of the wall. This door is a standard 30 inch door, uh, 80 inches tall. Uh, I did not buy a framed door and you will see why here uh, later on in a little bit. But uh, basically what I ended up putting in here was just a slab door blank. But this is just another another view of the five foot wall. So just a little quick look at the interior here. I had a couple of these uh, upper cabinets. Uh, just laying around so I decided to use those for storage. I put them in uh, right away because I knew that the door size and the size of the room was not going to allow me to put them in after the fact so I decided to put them in before. You'll see the workbench there. It's that same stacked 2x4 style workbench that I have in my shop as my regular workbench but I added these uh, before I got too far with the wall framing just so I could make sure I could get them in there because uh, I was going to run out of room to put them in later. So in these next few pictures, you can see I've got some angle irons screwed to the studs here. Uh, you're going to wonder why I screwed this angle iron to the studs, and that's because I lined these studs, or in between these studs, with quarter inch steel plate. This is obviously going to be a vault. I don't want it to be easy to get into or break into. Sheetrock simply wasn't going to cut it. So in order to put these quarter inch steel plates in between the studs, I had to have some way to affix and fasten them to. And so I put those angle irons in there and then I quite literally welded them to the quarter inch steel plate uh, to make this a very rigid and durable wall. There's no way anybody's getting into this thing with anything short of a cutting torch or some major tools. They're going to have to be pretty dedicated to the process to break into these walls. All right, so once I got all the steel plate put into place and everything was done that way, I went ahead and I lined the entire room with three quarter inch plywood. Could have probably gotten away with half inch, but three quarter inch gives me just that little bit more durability, a little more structural integrity, and it makes it all that much more difficult to, uh, to break into it. Not to mention the fact I know my limitations and I suck at sheetrock. Those guys that do sheetrock, my hat's off to you. That is a form of art in and of itself. I am not a sheetrocker, and I know that is within the cap with outside of my capabilities. So now I got just a little one-minute video. This is the only video I actually shot of the project, and it's a time-lapse uh, of me just basically uh, painting 
the the walls and everything again with plywood it made this process much easier than with sheetrock uh, i didn't have to texture anything all i had to do was do a little cutting in lay down some masking and bob's your uncle throw on some paint and it actually turned out far better than i had hoped it would uh, it came out as a with a very clean look and I'm very happy with the overall result of it. Again, painting is not my forte. I would rather go through root canal work than paint, but sometimes a guy's just got to do what he's got to do. So we'll go ahead and finish up this little bit of painting and we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that all the painting is done and I've basically got the uh, the room for the most part framed in, uh, now it's time to uh, go ahead and I started finishing the interior. And as you can see there, I basically finished the interior with uh, slab wood. This is uh, one by fours, basically. I went to the lumber yard, I picked up the straightest one by fours I could, and I screwed them to the wall. And I did that because now, anything I want to hang on the wall I don't have to look for a stud I don't have to look for anything specific I can just screw it directly to the wall so everywhere that had white inside of the room uh, basically got these one by four screwed to it and when I take you on the final vault tour at the end you will see that I was very easily able to hang things to to mount firearms and whatever else to inside of the vault and now it's time to frame in the door. So there's my 30 inch steel door and that's a heavy duty steel door. It's uh, basically the same kind of door you would find in, a, in an old style school or an industrial setting. Very heavy gauge, very heavy duty. And I framed it using uh, 3 16 uh, flat steel. And then I welded it all together inside of the frame as well as screwing it in with 3 inch construction screws. No way that that's going to go, go away. The 3 inch construction screws are screwed in from the exterior and the interior. There's just taking the screws out of the outside is not going to allow anybody to remove that door. It is all welded into place and then I went ahead and I painted the frame uh, after the fact which you will see here in a little bit. But that is a very solid framing. As far as the hinges go, I went ahead and I welded the hinges directly to the framing. Uh, I've only got the screws in there because that's what I used to initially hang the door as a temporary solution and I just left them in there. Plug welded the rest of the holes. Uh, I have since gone ahead and uh, tacked the uh, hinge pins in place so there's no way that the hinge, hinge pins can be removed. But I also have these, uh, these steel hinge catches which you can see when the door gets closed those catches go into those holes of reinforced steel and if somebody was able to get the hinge pins out those pins uh, on the inside of the frame or on the inside of the hinges would not allow them to remove the door and I've got those on all three hinges as well. I actually found those uh, hinge pins by accident on Amazon and I will provide a link in the description below if that's something that you want to use for anything that you might want to apply them to. So quite obviously the heart of any uh, vault or secure room is the locks that you put on them. Uh, I used a, a quick set door handle lock with a keypad code entry and I also used a quick set deadbolt lock which was matching also with a keypad uh, code entry with key backups. You'll also notice that on the right side of the door there is a piece of angle iron. That angle iron is actually screwed to the door and covers up the deadbolt and the uh, door handle latch so nobody can access those or cut those. Uh, they would have to go through the angle iron to, uh, to get access to those. But I went ahead and I screwed those to the inside door of the door jam. Obviously when I did this I had to leave enough space uh, gap to accept that piece of angle iron but that door is very very secure uh, the keypad code is six digits on both the door handle and the deadbolt and just for an added little bit of security I did find this motion activated alarm it is either battery operated or plug-in operated I opted for the batteries I found this on Amazon you can actually deactivate it with a key fob button much like your uh, keyless entry on your car it only cost me about $30. It seems like it's fairly well built. The alarm is extremely loud. It also provides a red flashing light just to give a little shock value if somebody was to break into the door. 
And finally, I went ahead and painted the door in Rust-Oleum hammered metal finish uh, in a gray color. Kind of gives it that vault door look, if you will, uh, just to kind of finish it off. I really like the, the finish of that paint, and it, it really just kind of it just kind of tied the whole thing together and made it look very look made it look very vaultish, if you will. Uh, very happy with the performance of that Rust-Oleum paint. I've used hammered metal finish before, and it sprays really easy, and it's a nice look. All right, so let's go ahead and take a, a tour of the vault. Now, obviously, like I said, I've got a, a key fob to disable the alarm. So I just hit the unlock button. You can hear it beep. It acknowledges the fact that the alarm has been disabled. Now I have to put in a code for both my deadbolt and my door handle. I'm obviously not going to show you those codes. Now the deadbolt is unlocked. And the doorknob is unlocked. Go ahead and let myself into my vault. And there's the gun vault itself. It's uh, obviously, I've got some of my firearms in there already. I've got more to add, but we'll, uh, we'll just leave it at this part. So you can see it turned out really nice. I made these, uh, these wood racks, actually, if I must be 100% truthful, my father-in-law made them for me. So I made those, those stands for the firearms to lean up against. Uh, these brackets for the AR style rifles, I actually bought these on Amazon. Uh, they're just a hook, they go into the magazine well, like those a lot. Those are really, really nice. Uh, as you can see, I've got them all hanging up there on my wall. Here's my, uh, my shelving with some ammunition, magazines and accessories and some more ammunition. You can see on the wall here, I put, uh, put some handgun hangers. Again, I bought these on Amazon. These are really, really nice. They're just a, a wooden rod or a metal rod and they're coated so they don't damage your firearm. Screw them right to the wall. They work for down to 22 caliber. Really, really like those. Those are really nice. Uh, I built a, a little system up here to hold some of my gun cases and a shelf up there for some additional storage. There's my alarm. Quite obviously, I put in a, an LED light. I'm just very, very happy overall with the way this turned out. Uh, very, very happy, very pleased with the whole overall result. And now I've got a really nice storage space for all my firearms and the related accessories, something that somebody can't break into easily. So let's go ahead and close it up. And then I'm going to activate the alarm so you can hear the alarm. So the alarm is activated. It takes about 10 seconds for the alarm to, uh, to uh, hit its activation mode. That's to allow you to actually leave the room. So it should be activated now. Hit the code for my door handle again because it obviously uh, rearmed itself. Very, very loud. And then to deactivate it, just hit the unlock button and it deactivates that. It's a 125 decibel alarm, it's very, very loud. The dogs hate it, uh, very much so. But uh, yeah, overall, very, very happy with the result. Very, very happy with how this all turned out. I'll go ahead and turn the light off. Eventually I will have to put the rest of my firearms in there and then we'll have them all secured. To go ahead and lock the deadbolt, I just have to push the quick set button. And now the deadbolt is locked. Go ahead and hit the arm button. My alarm is armed. And we are back in business. Everything's locked up and secured. And there you go. That's been my project for the last few days. Like I said, again, I apologize. I didn't get it on video, but it was a pretty daunting project. And to get all of that on video would have been it would have been something and it was just more than I wanted to take on and I wanted to get it done so I could get uh, get my items secured and in a place where I could uh, where I could feel confident that they weren't going to get messed with and get stolen so at any rate there it is I hope you enjoyed it I hope it gave you maybe some ideas on what you can do for a for a gun vault or a walk-in gun storage of yourself for yourself if you got any questions on what I did or how I did it Please feel free to hit me in the comments down below. You know, you know by now if you're a regular watcher, I answer as many of the comments as I possibly can. 
even on the videos that are quite old that I've had out there from way back in the beginning, I still try to answer as many as I possibly can. With that, this is Ed with Jack of All Trades. As always, thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks to all the people who watch my videos. And we will see you on the next video.